Searching for the thing who's there. I didn't hear it. You can have a story to tell. I bet we're in fainting. I bet it's bedtime. We probably got up pretty early in the morning. What time is wake up call? Randolph County Infirmary is a very beautiful and historic location nestled in the rural farmlands of Winchester, Indiana. What 
brought me to this location is the same, I would say, for every paranormal enthusiast and investigator who goes out and seeks haunted locations. Its aesthetic and history is a prime example for what people believe is a recipe for a haunting. Its structure was built in 1899, but the layers of other locations built on the same property where the infirmary now sits is also an intriguing aspect that you have to consider when looking back at the history. In the mid 1800s, there was a wooden home that served as an orphanage and a refuge for people and families who weren't as fortunate as um, the middle class and upper classes. This unfortunately burned down and there was another brick structure based on my research built in place of this, but it was also uh, tore down and the infirmary that we see now was built in 1899 and did not close until 2009. Now, an infirmary is a hospital. What's interesting about this particular hospital is that it was almost like a catch-all. In its early years, it served as a hospital and asylum. There was mental patients kept there. There was unfortunate people due to low income sent there and treated for various illnesses, including tuberculosis and other things. Over a century, this location has seen many, many deaths. The original orphanage would have a cemetery that has been completely removed of all of its headstones, but the bodies remain. A lot of people believe that this is a recipe for the haunting that occurs there now. All the unmarked graves are located in a little grass patch outside the infirmary to the southwest um, in between the barn and the infirmary itself. The multi-layered history of this location is the most intriguing to me. When I first entered the building, I definitely picked up on what I would call a fully functioning multi-layered facility, echoing with past events, psychokinetic energies, and poltergeist-like entities and energies as well. This location is really cool to investigate and test theories and try to understand more about what we call paranormal phenomena. It kind of gave me a, not really a sad feeling, but it kind of gave you one of the reminiscent feelings where you're standing in, you're standing on a property that once was a whole lot larger than what it is now. And you could, you could kind of tell that just by looking at the area because it's so wide open. But with some of the outlying buildings and the smaller spots that were around, you could tell that it was a larger facility when it was operating than what's on that site now. And to see, to see the outside, uh, it was well taken care of, a lot better than some of the other ones we've been to. And, you know, it was kind of a good feeling to see a place like that being taken care of, kept up nice, grass mowed, it's not falling in. And, you know, it was kind of refreshing. The, the surrounding area was just awesome. You look around the fields and, you know, different seasons, different times of year, I really would probably make that place stand out a whole lot more than it did when we were there, because it was pretty damn cold. Being that it was a location that had a lot of legend attached to it, and a lot of stuff that was hearsay, nothing really that anybody could have and present to you as concrete evidence, from what I experienced inside the building, it, it's, it's an active location for sure that I would want to go back to multiple times to find out a why it's so active b what is in there that is active and c what caused it to become active because there are certain areas that seem to be really 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 active and other areas that you you would go to and it was like well there ain't nothing here but why why wouldn't the whole building 
have a whole bunch of stuff going on because of the activity in certain areas being so concentrated. It, it was like there, there were pockets. They had concentrated in a hallway, concentrated in a couple rooms, concentrated in a stairwell. Early on into the investigation, we did not experience much. Derek and Missy went to the top floor to investigate and Josh and I went to the basement. It was very quiet, but Missy had made contact with some spirits that reside at the infirmary prior to arriving and was trying to reconnect with them. In doing so, I believe she made contact with a male spirit that roams the entire location frequently and is very active. There's someone down there at the end of the hall. What do you mean? By somebody down there. Wait. There's someone down there. I was drawn to the, I think we were on the second floor in the, the very back, like the sunroom, I think it was. And I just, I could have stayed there all night. For what reason, I don't know, but I could have just sat there. Did you see a man standing at the end of the hall? Yes, I did. What did he look like? He was in, he was mid fifties, maybe. And he just sat back there and he would talk about anything. Was he an employee or a patient? Patient. I don't remember how old she was. I had a dream about a female. She was a, she said she was a schizophrenic or that she had seizures or I can't remember what. But she said that she was lonely and she was sad and she didn't want to be there anymore. She actually came to me when I got there and I didn't say anything about it to you. But as I was, as we were setting up and doing B-roll, I asked her why she was sad and she said, because no one understands me. She wouldn't talk to me after that. She just said she was sad and she, she wanted to be left alone. It felt like, like a running facility. Do you know what I mean? Like there was chaos, like every day, you know, back and forth, like people yelling, patients talking, whatever. Like when you walk into the floor of a hospital, We spent a lot of time investigating every square inch of the building, apart from random feelings of being watched and Missy sensing some entities early on in the investigation. Very little was happening at this point. After going at it hard for many hours, we take a break to regroup and charge some cameras. As we are resting, Josh reminds us of a strange feeling he had about the first floor on the men's ward hallway. Josh rarely feels anything while investigating and has visited dozens of the most haunted locations in the Midwest. His report of this strange feeling got our attention, so we decided to strip him of all gear and monitor him as we investigate the hallway together. I didn't notice it right away. Now we, we made several trips in and out you know, getting equipment inside. So it wasn't, it wasn't right away, but I did notice um, after a couple of trips that, you know, down the door that we were coming in, there was a hallway to my left and I had to go right. So when I walked past that hallway, it's kind of hard to describe the feeling, but it was just like something was right here, but it, you know, down that hallway, it just, I was getting this feeling on my left side as I was walking past every time. But when I would come back through, it was on my right side. So I was constantly feeling something down this certain, you know, this certain hallway. And, you know, I didn't mention it until later because normally I just, you know, blow it off. But it, it just kept, you know, every single time I walked past there, even, 
you know, taking pictures and stuff like that. I was always feeling something coming from that hallway. And I don't normally um, experience or, or have feelings like that, so I thought it was pretty interesting. So Justin suggested that I just, you know, we had enough equipment, we were all together. So we just, you know, just decided to uh, not carry anything. No recorders, no, you know, all I had was just a light to make sure I didn't trip or anything like that so I could see when I needed to see, but um, I had nothing. So we walked down the hallway and I could just feel the, I don't know, I guess the energy just feeling stronger and stronger as we went down the down that hallway and I was kind of drawn to this one room it had a had some kind of chair in it and you know a couple other things and but it was I don't know it just kind of was kind of felt like I had to go in there so we went in there and and we were doing an EVP session and that's when we heard a woman's voice
keep going, Josh. Standing there. It's a door. I know, but there was someone standing there. You? No. <laughs> Besides me. Because I don't know if it's just my fucking imagination, but why would I imagine that? Right. That's what's weird to I me. Mean. This room is only as colder than any of the other rooms we've seen. In. So, mm -hmm. a lot of windows now. Right. There's a you lot think, of. Did, you think that was a disembodied voice? The woman's. No. Yeah. The woman's voice? I heard it over this. Because I thought it was. Yeah, I, time, I heard a woman. Okay. Second time, not the first time, it's not right. But okay. it sounded like it was out of the room. Yeah, it distant. Like, it sounded like it was echoing down the halls. But very faint. What is the temperature in this room? Probably cold. 42. I know way it's 42. Why is there an exit room down there? Huh? Because oh. the lights run. If you run that back light in. Drains better. It's a wash line, it's just like a sink. Yeah, I just wanted to. This goes, takes you down to the basement. Shoo! Right. I don't know. I feel fucking weird. Well, that's why I said this for now. Alright, hold on. Shh, shh, shh. What 
is that? Shh. What the fuck? What's that tapping noise? I didn't hear it. I don't hear This door, something's tapping on this door, something just hit this wall right, right, right over here. Behind me, that's why I turn around. Hold on, shh, shh, shh. What is that? Shh. What the fuck? What's that tapping noise? I don't hear. I don't hear. This door, something's happened on this door, something just hit this wall right, right, right over here. Behind me, that's why I turn around. Hold on, shh, shh, shh. What is that? Shh. What the fuck? What's that tapping noise? I didn't hear. I don't hear. This door, something's tapping on this door, something just hit this wall right, right, right over here. Behind me, that's why I turn around. Is there a draft? That wasn't doing math. No, it was. It was that tap. It was a tap. But something hit this fucking door frame right Dude, here. Dude, I don't I don't know. It's fucked up right here. Because I was standing with my back like this. Oh, okay, put your hand on the door. You. Oh my word. Bear hand? Yeah. Is Holy. What's wrong with that? I mean, it's cold. No. No, feel the energy coming. Oh, yeah. Already it's yeah. I already feel it. Yeah. I already feel it. I don't I, have to touch I've it. I've never felt nothing like that. It's like it sends a, bu a buzz to your fingers. I already feel it. But I was standing there and it was like... I, I think that it, we'll hear something if we be quiet. I don't know that, man. Quit. We know you're here. What was that? I heard it. I was downstairs. Shh, shh, shh. Be quiet. Are you down there? We're not afraid. We know what it feels like to walk in the darkness. You don't walk alone. Did you get it? No, yeah, my camera was pointing down this stairwell. So <coughs> on the wall. Let's go down there for a okay. second. And then I want to back here. That was loud. That was loud. That was loud. That was That was loud. That was That was loud. 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 That was I'm sorry, I, I'm not just curious. Yeah, you'll, you'll do it a lot. Yep. Um, here in a minute, we'll backtrack and make sure that that Nikon's still recording. It's been 14 minutes on this, so.
what was that noise? I don't know, Josh. I know when, when he first started kind of feeling the, the he felt, a, felt the draw down that hallway. And we, we were setting up, we had our stuff in the room and we were setting up and we, we had walked out to go get something else that we had forgot. And he kept looking down that hallway and he kept looking down that hallway. And then we, we come back in and he's looking down the hallway again. And when we went back in the setup, he was like, something is, something's in that hallway. And he, he, Missy even said, she goes, what do you mean something's in that hallway? You never, you never have experiences. You never feel things. What's, what are you feeling? And he's like, I don't know, but something is in that hallway. It, it's drawing me to that hallway. So we, we hurried up, got everything set up, because she was ready to go right then. And she said, hey, come on, let's go. We'll go check it out. And he was like, no, I want to wait till we get everything brought in, put where we needed to put it, start getting stuff set up, get Justin, let him know what's going on, and then we'll go down there and check it out. And, you know, it, it was very strange because it didn't seem like that area, that whole side of the building was where all the activity was. You've got a hallway in the basement, a hallway on the first floor, hallway on the second floor, they all line up. All three of those floors were active, even in the stairwell, the stairwell that we heard the noises in, that we heard the banging and stuff, was in that same hallway bank. But then when you went to the other side, there was nothing, which kind of surprised me, because why would you have activity on one side of the building and not the other? Now the cemetery is on that side of the building, out in the grass. There's nothing technically on the other side like that, except for the open fields and the chicken coop thing and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's weird. What can you remember about the woman's voice that we heard in the hallway when we entered that side room with the chair? I guess it would be a, a disembodied voice, which sounded like a, a woman. Um, we couldn't make out any words or anything like that, just the, the sound. But again, we were all together and it wasn't anybody in the room. So we left that room and, and continued on down the hallway and the feeling just kept getting stronger. And I believe it was one of the bathroom doors down at the end of the hall. Um, I believe Missy was, was talking about the energy coming from there when she put her hand on the door. So I'd put my hand on the door and again, normally I don't, I don't feel anything like that, but I just, it felt so strong down in the, in that end of the hallway. And it wasn't long after that, we were standing just outside that, that door and there was a stairway that went down into the basement and we were all kind of talking and we heard this loud bang come from the basement. Um, later on, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't figure out what it was. I mean, there wasn't, wasn't much down there that could actually make that noise uh, that we found. So, right after that, we were, we were kind of walking back and forth down at that end. And I just felt this, just this energy kind of come over me and, and it was just, it felt very different. It, I had never felt anything like that before. So I was just kind of like shaking it out and just, it was just kind of weird. It didn't scare me or anything like that. It was just um, a feeling I'd never had, wasn't used to. And most of the time I'm concentrating on, on filming and uh, things like that. So it was definitely a, an odd experience for me. When I entered the room at the end of the hallway, the feeling was very strange and very strong. I actually visualized what this entity looked like, and that is very rare for me to do. The striking resemblance to the Slender Man cannot be overlooked. It is very interesting that someone who is a psychic predicted that there would be something there that would fit the descriptions the same thing I saw before I even knew it is very interesting and something we need to take note of. While we exited this room, the group members had a feeling about certain end of the hallway, I which I believe it was the right after exiting. Um, some of my group members would be looking back towards that way. Like this energy was so palpable and so strong that the uh, members who usually don't get feelings 
and don't get drawn to certain spots we're getting drawn to it including josh spender this was very interesting to me but not surprising i felt like this energy had a dark signature to it but it was not intelligent like a human it did not seem like a human entity so i knew something was going to happen but i didn't want to you know frighten or cause a lot of hype for the situation i was just trying to concentrate on everyone being quiet so we can capture the phenomena whatever was about to happen and we did we caught something that sounded like a growl I was not aware at the time that I was growled, but I heard something. We caught footsteps walking straight up to us and banging on the wall right where we were at, which is something very phenomenal. It is very rare that you capture things like this. Derek seen something. At the same time, I was being, you know, drawn to the other end of the hallway. And this happened after we heard a bang. I wanted the entity to know that we weren't afraid. We may have been very, you know, on edge and alert, but I wanted it to make clear that this is something that we do all the time and that trying to get us out of the area or do something to frighten us was not going to work in this scenario. But I just find it interesting that the activity wanted to spike at that point in time. and. Based on my research over the last six years, I feel like people who have psychic ability or tap into their psychic ability allow things to manifest in their environment. There's some type of factor or physics involved with the psyche and the spirit realm colliding together or me meshing together somehow. It mixes and causes things to manifest much, much more than it would naturally. And I want you guys to let me know what you think about this theory because it seems like it's a repeated trend every time we go out especially with my mother when she starts picking up or sensing things things happen and the stronger the psychic ability the more the manifestation later on when we decided to go down into the basement level we made our way to the kitchen where we heard a bang sound which sounded very much like a door slamming this has been captured and documented on a lot of investigations there, including those have been shown on television. When we got in there, it felt very dark, very ominous, dark meaning that there was very little light. And the only way we could see was our headlamps and the LCD screens on our camera equipment. It felt very much like we were not wanted. And I took this opportunity to do a burst EVP session to see if we can drum up some activity and take advantage of this attention we were getting from the, the spirit energy there. What was interesting is we did capture some voice phenomena that I cannot account for. And again, you will see some members reacting to it. And I think this is very important to, you know, put into the video because the more you connect, the more you elicit some type of emotional response to certain situations I think can bring about some activity but we'll let you be the judge of that and we'll just take note of it we don't know if that's what's happening here but there's a lot of activity that occurs down in the kitchen and it seems like people are not welcome there for the most part in the kitchen area in the back in the basement I didn't like that room because I, I don't know why I I like to bake and I think that the the woman that was there and that was her space she liked to bake that was her thing and she didn't want me down there she was standing off in the corner behind us watching us This is what? Is this the this is the room we were gonna find last year? No. Uh, no. no. It looks similar. It does look similar. Another walk. 
sick of the food I can make in here. Session, basement, Randolph County Infirmary, kitchen area. Would like to have a conversation. If there's anybody here in spirit, if you can hear me. Can you talk to me? My name's Justin. What's your name? Do you need help? My name's Justin. What's your name? Do you need help? My name's Justin. What's your name? Do you need help? Let's 
see it moved. You're allowed to come in here now. Ida's room in the basement is a story and part of the lore that is told by tour guides and groundskeepers there when you go investigate. Ida is pretty tragic. She somehow got some type of psychosis during menopause. She had been put into the infirmary there after she was widowed, I believe that's correct. And that coupled with her menopause pretty much made her go insane. They put her in a, you know, a room that they could lock up. It's the only room with barred windows down there. And the story says that she just pretty much got a broomstick, put it over the pipes and used that as a place to hang herself and commit suicide. A lot of people believe that her spirit still lingers there. We went into the room ourselves to see if we can capture anything, communicate with her spirit. While we were in there, we tried a few things. Nothing really seemed to work. But as I progress in my research, the best thing to do is just sit back and wait and try to connect instead of using these devices that they would have known nothing about and have no interest in interacting with. But what was curious to me was when we walked out after no activity, we did capture a female voice, what appears to be a female voice. And that was interesting because a female voice is often, very often captured and heard in this hallway and this area of the infirmary. And that is interesting. That is something that we need to repeat and replicate and keep going back and see if we can find why that happens and if this is intelligent. It's fucking quiet. It is. Got way quiet. Josh is like, fuck you. He's like, I'm going to sit down. It, it, I mean, it, it's not as trippy as it was. So we want to leave this, leave the Nikon run, reset it. Um, it's about 10 minutes. We'll leave it. We'll leave it sit right here. Uh, I want to get lights for these lights, so I can keep, I want to keep. Do you think we should move this Zoom Q8 up a uh, level? Yeah, we do that. We already have it set there for a while. Right. We have it upstairs. All right. Um. Fucking glow sticks. Mm -hmm. I heard a female talking or humming or singing or something. I heard it. That's why. Shh, shh, don't move. Boy, it's fucking quiet. It is. It got way quiet. Josh is like, fuck you. He's like, I'm gonna go sit down. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it, it's not as trippy as it was. So we wanna leave this, leave the Nikon run, reset it. Um, it's about 10 minutes. We'll leave it. We'll leave it sit right here. Uh, I wanna to get lights for these lights so I can keep, I wanna keep. Do you think we should move this Zoom Q8 up a level? Yeah, we do that. We already have it set in there for a while. Right. We haven't had it upstairs. Alright. Um. Fucking glow sticks. Mm -hmm. Is that my stomach? Yeah. I heard a female talking or humming or singing or something. I heard it. That's why. Shh, shh, don't move. Boy, 
it's fucking quiet. It is. Got way quiet. Josh is like, fuck you. He's like, I'm going to sit down. It, it, I mean, it, it's not as trippy as it was. So we want to leave this, leave the Nikon run, reset it. Um, it's got 10 minutes. We'll leave it. We'll leave it sit right here. Uh, I want to get lights for these lights so I can keep, I want to keep. Do you think we should move this Zoom Q8 up a uh, level? Yeah, we do that. We already had it sitting there for a while. Right. We haven't had it upstairs. All right. right. Um. Fucking glow sticks. Mm -hmm. Is that my stomach? No. I heard a female talking or humming or singing or something. I heard it. That's why. Shh, shh, don't move. It's just, it's kind of one of them locations that I think when you go to it, you're going to experience something depending on what you're looking for, who you are, what you believe, and where you're at in the building at the time. And I think the seasons are going to have a whole lot to do with it too, activity wise. Just because it was a working farm, self sustaining, you know, the winter months they didn't do a whole lot because they couldn't farm. So a lot of their stuff was done inside, and it, it probably wasn't as busy. In the summer, spring months, I'm sure it, in the fall months, it got really busy because they did their own farming and stuff. I think that time span, you'll probably pick up more activity because that's when the whole property was more active. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to kind of check check that out against you know what we got the last time and see if that correlates. Anybody watching, you really need to go check these places out. I mean, the cost, a lot of people are looking for cost cost-efficient locations to check out. Places just to go, you know, for a historical experience. These places that we're going to, like Randolph County Infirmary, some of the other locations that we've been, they're not that expensive. If you're an investigator, spend the money, check it out. It's helping them and it's helping you because you can, you can better yourselves by learning the history and checking these places out. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't think there's anywhere that we've been yet that's been a total bust it wouldn't be worth spending the money just to do a historical tour on to help them out. You know, that's what it's all about. In conclusion, Randolph County Infirmary is a very beautiful, very historic, and very active location, to say the least. The fact that lots of paranormal groups and tours and enthusiasts go through there can impact this location in good and bad ways. A lot of the psychokinetic manifestations that I encountered there and others have can be problematic, but I don't think it's dangerous. It's just a lot of times people will pick up on things that are caused by the living that may not be human. That involves the poltergeist and the PK manifestations. So when you hear bangs and when you hear things opening and closing, that is not necessarily a ghost or spirit doing that. That could be something else. Just food for thought. I think the location is very important to local history and very. it's very important that we keep this place going, not only for research, but I think a lot of people resonate with not wanting to let go of these places. In the latter years of Randolph County Infirmary, it was used as a rest home. So There's some elderly people, I still feel their energy there, and they didn't want to let go either. So when you go into these locations, it's palpable that the emotions of not wanting to let go for whatever reason can resonate with a lot of people in the paranormal field, a lot of empaths, and a lot of people with abilities. And I think that helps fuel hauntings and helps keep the energy flowing regularly. So I would like to thank you for watching this video. I would very much like you to book a tour or an investigation at Rand Randolph County Infirmary and experience it yourself and help keep that building going. And I would like to thank you for 
you know, joining us on this incredible journey of season five of Portals to the Past. This would be our last installment of that video series. And when there is an end, there's a new beginning. So I urge you to subscribe if you're not subscribed and to follow along on social media. Season six is starting up right away. There is going to be no gap or hiatus in our content. So make sure you stay tuned for season six Interface Death Reborn. There's a lot of changes, a lot of new upgrades to our camera equipment, a lot of great things to come. We'll see you next time.